production and consumption part 1 in the us recovery was quicker we have already seen how the war helped boost the us economy after a short period of economic trouble in the years after the war the us economy resumed its strong growth in the early 1920s one important feature of the us economy of the 1920s was mass production the move towards mass production had begun in the late 19th century but in the 1920s it became a characteristic feature of industrial production in the us a well known pioneer of mass production was the car manufacturer henry ford He adapted the assembly line of a Chicago slaughterhouse in which slaughtered animals were picked apart by butchers as they came down a conveyor belt to his new car plant in Detroit. He realized that the assembly line method would allow a faster and cheaper way of producing vehicles. The assembly line forced workers to repeat a single task mechanically and continuously such as fitting a particular part to the car at a pace dictated by the conveyor belt. This was a way of increasing the output per worker by speeding up the pace of work. Standing in front of a conveyor belt no worker could afford to delay the motions take a break or even have a friendly word with a workmate as a result henry ford's cars came off the assembly line at 3 minute intervals a speed much faster than that achieved by previous methods The T model Ford was the world's first mass-produced car. At first, workers at the Ford factory were unable to cope with the stress of working on assembly lines in which they could not control the pace of work. So they quit in large numbers. In desperation, Ford doubled the daily wage to dollar 5 in January 1914. At the same time, he banned trade unions from operating in his plants. Henry Ford recovered the high wage by repeatedly speeding up the production line and forcing workers to work even harder. So much so he would soon describe his decision to double the daily wage as the best cost-cutting decision he ever made. Fordist industrial practices soon spread in the US. They were also widely copied in Europe in the 1920s. Rise of mass production consumption part 2. Mass production lowered costs and prices of engineered goods. Thanks to higher wages More workers could now afford to purchase durable consumer goods such as cars. Car production in the US rose from 2 million in 1919 to more than 5 million in 1929.
Similarly, there was a spurt in the purchase of refrigerators, washing machines, radios, gramophone players, all through a system of higher purchase. That is, on credit, repaid in weekly or monthly installments. The demand for refrigerators, washing machines, etc. was also fueled by a boom in house construction and home ownership, financed once again by loans. The housing and consumer boom of the 1920s created the basis of prosperity in the US. Large investments in housing and household goods seem to create a cycle of higher employment and incomes, rising consumption demand, more investment and yet more employment and incomes. In 1923, the US resumed exporting capital to the rest of the world and became the largest overseas lender. US imports and capital exports also boosted European recovery and world trade and income growth over the next six years. All this, however, proved too good to last. By 1929, the world would plunge into a depression such as it had never experienced before. The Great Depression Part 1 The Great Depression began around 1929 and lasted till the mid-1930s. During this period, most part of the world experienced catastrophic declines in production, employment, incomes and trade. The exact timing and impact of the depression varied across countries. But in general, agricultural regions and communities were the worst affected. This was because the fall in agricultural prices was greater and more prolonged than in the prices of industrial goods. The depression was caused by a combination of several factors. We have already seen how fragile the post-war world economy was. First, agricultural overproduction remained a problem. This was made worse by falling agricultural prices. As prices slumped and agricultural incomes declined, farmers tried to expand production and bring a larger volume of produce to the market to maintain their overall income. This worsened the glut in the market, pushing down prices even further. Farm produce rotted for the lack of buyers. Second, in the mid-1920s, many countries financed their investments through loans from the US. While it was often extremely easy to raise loans in the US when the going was good, US overseas lenders panicked at the first sign of trouble. In the first half of 1928, U.S. overseas loans amounted to over $1 billion. A year later, it was one quarter of that amount. Countries that depended crucially on U.S. loans now faced an acute crisis. 
the withdrawal of US loans affected much of the rest of the world, though in different ways. In Europe, it led to the failure of some major banks and the collapse of currencies such as the British pound sterling. In Latin America and elsewhere, it intensified the slump in agricultural and raw material prices. The US attempt to protect its economy in the depression by doubling import duties also dealt another severe blow to world trade. The Great Depression Part 2 The US was also the industrial country most severely affected by the depression. With the fall in prices and the prospect of a depression, US banks had also slashed domestic lending and called back loans. Farms could not sell their harvests, households were ruined and businesses collapsed. Faced with falling incomes, many households in the US could not repay what they had borrowed and were forced to give up their homes, cars and other consumer durables. The consumerist prosperity of the 1920s now disappeared in a puff of dust. As unemployment soared, people trudged long distances looking for any work they could find. Ultimately, the US banking system itself collapsed. Unable to recover investments, collect loans and repay depositors, Thousands of banks went bankrupt and were forced to close. The numbers are phenomenal. By 1933, over 4,000 banks had closed and between 1929 and 1932, about 110,000 companies had collapsed. By 1935, a modest economic recovery was underway in most industrial countries. But the Great Depression's wider effects on society, politics and international relations and on people's minds proved more enduring. India and the Great Depression If we look at the impact of the depression on India, we realize how integrated the global economy had become by the early 20th century. The tremors of a crisis in one part of the world were quickly relayed to other parts, affecting lives, economies and societies worldwide. In the 19th century, as you have seen, colonial India had become an exporter of agricultural goods and importer of manufactured goods. The depression immediately affected the Indian trade. India's exports and imports nearly halved between 1928 and 1934. As international prices crashed, prices in India also plunged. Between 1928 and 1934, wheat prices in India fell by 50%. Peasants and farmers suffered more than urban dwellers. Though agricultural prices fell sharply, the colonial government refused to reduce revenue demands. Peasants producing for the world market were the worst hit. Consider the jute producers of Bengal. 
they grew raw jute that was produced in factories for export in the form of gunny bags. But as gunny exports collapsed, the price of raw jute crashed more than 60%. Peasants who borrowed in the hope of better times or to increase output in the hope of higher incomes faced even lower prices and fell deeper and deeper into debt. Thus, the Bengal jute growers lament. Grow more jute brothers with the hope of greater cash. Costs and debts of jute will make your hopes get dashed. When you have spent all your money and got the crop off the ground, traders sitting at home will pay only rupees 5 a mound. Across India, peasants' indebtedness increased. They used up their savings, mortgaged lands and sold whatever jewellery and precious metals they had to meet their expenses. In these depression years, India became an exporter of precious metals, notably gold. The famous economist John Maynard Keynes thought that the Indian gold exports promoted global economic recovery. They certainly helped speed up Britain's recovery, but did little for the Indian peasant. Rural India was thus seething with unrest when Mahatma Gandhi launched the civil disobedience movement at the height of depression in 1931. The depression proved less grim for urban India. Because of falling prices, those with fixed income, say town dwelling landowners who received rents and middle class salaried employees now found themselves better off. Everything cost less. Industrial investment also grew as the government extended tariff protection to industries under the pressure of nationalist opinion.